Hello, dear friends. How are you? I'm Ari Ferger, and today I'm here just to give a little advice which was asked of me. This isn't a question or a case of unsolicited advice, but rather a simple point of view I was expressing just the other day uh, to a group of people in my Instagram. <laughs> Surviving witchcraft, but through a left-hand path approach or perspective. I'll try to be brief, so bear it with me if you would be so kind. Um, I thought about um, actually giving this advice in one of my videos in my White One series, but I think this is rather simple, so it just requires a short and quick take. When it comes to witchcraft, uh, most of the time it's quite the solitary work. Of course, at some point, whether it is when we are taking our first steps into witchcraft or later on in life with a consistent bag of knowledge and no small amount of confidence, we may indeed participate, belong or create a group in which people gather to do witchcraft, for whatever reasons. However, for those who are really interested in witchcraft, especially from a traditional and animistic perspective and uh, who really invest their time and uh, dedication into it, witchcraft not only becomes a way of life but also a great responsibility. I would even say a set of responsibilities that requires our almost full-time attention and dedication. A witch's life itself becomes a constant commitment and at various times in several moments in life even an obligation before ourselves and forces and beings with whom we create a relationship with. So, in my view, if witchcraft for someone is just a matter of working together in a group, say a coven, uh, it doesn't seem to me that that person is really invested in witchcraft, so to speak, but rather uh, is more interested in the, um, in the connections that that person has and creates with a certain community of human persons who are more familiar to that person and there is no problem with that whatsoever. Each one does what they like and uh, that which brings them more benefits and even a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment and pleasure. However, when we really want to dive deep into witchcraft and it really becomes something concrete and fundamental in our lives, this requires a, an effort on our part, constantly working towards it, constant dedication and personal evolution. This does not mean that it is not necessary or even that there should not be contact with other people and form a group. Yes, obviously, we can belong to or form a group of human persons for certain methods and objectives in witchcraft. What I'm saying here is that it's certainly not beneficial to do witchcraft solely in a group and wait for the group to have some contact with witchcraft, if really the objective is to turn witchcraft into our life being witchcraft a way of life with which we interact with uh, the world and its persons and the way we express ourselves to the world around us. What happens if someone from uh, the group cannot be present, cannot attend, or if at certain times the group simply cannot get together? Shall we stop doing witchcraft? Of course not. Hence, most of the time, witchcraft is a rather solitary approach. We cannot wait for others. There is a commitment to ourselves and an objective set for us to evolve and develop our practices and our relationships within traditional witchcraft. That's why we must constantly work for it without waiting for others, but trying to do things for ourselves. Hence, it is something that is often a lonely work. Being a solitary witch isn't necessarily something selfish. There's quite often this idea that when we work in and for ourselves, when we try to have some personal evolution, to work hard to achieve a better version of ourselves, that this is something rather selfish and for personal gain. Well, it is indeed for personal gain, but that's not synonymous with 
the selfishness of self-aggrandizement for the sake of overpowering others. If anything, the more knowledge we gather as solitary witches, the better, because this will prove quite useful for the group when we get the chance to gather around, but it will also be quite useful when someone asks for our help, or when uh, the time comes to choose another person to carry on the work, because we do not live forever, or simply because when we are face to face with a challenge, we need to know what can be done to, at the very least, minimize the more harmful aspects of, uh, of a challenge and survive it. When witchcraft finally becomes a responsibility, uh, there are many dangers we pass through that will produce and give us useful knowledge, provided that we survive. And in order for us to survive in witchcraft, uh, to grow and thrive and flourish in it and with it, um, it requires a lot of work and we, can, we cannot simply wait on others to do the work for us, because only by doing it will we indeed comprehend what's at stake and we will realize the amount of real responsibilities and that it really isn't a game for children in the backyard when we can gather around and play after a break from fancy lot school. Solitary work is necessary in witchcraft. It's a question of survival, even to survive from certain mindsets of other people. We need to be prepared and that requires our utmost attention to the craft because we need to improve in it and always become better at it, refine the craft, perfect it, so we can mitigate the more harmful aspects of life, because it is a question of survival. Witchcraft comes as an approach towards life, a perspective and very much pragmatic behavior in order to improve everyday living. And the type of mindset from a left-hand path approach might be quite useful to apply in here, precisely as a mode of thinking that helps us to focus on the solitary work, to remind us of the importance of self-improvement. Well then, very briefly and generalized, whether people turn to occult paths or systems designed right hand or left hand, makes no difference when it comes to the goal people want to achieve because all such paths aim to communicate esoteric knowledge and abilities. The problem at hand is the misconceptions about such paths, such as stating that right-hand paths are altruistic and left-hand paths are egocentric. It can very well be the reverse, more often than not, actually. But the problem or the problems aren't these paths in themselves, but how people choose to behave and how they choose to apply the knowledge they have gained. As I said here a couple of times, uh, some people need religion, spirituality to determine their morals. If people can't understand right and wrong, they lack empathy and common sense. And religion, spirituality or any esoteric and magical path won't help them. Empathy and common sense come from being humane and not by following a, a human's perspective of reality that is self-serving on self-aggrandizement for the sake of the illusionary pleasure that comes from a fanciful idea of being above all others. In my opinion, <coughs> sorry, um, well, in my opinion we have to first work on our morals, values, on our ability to be empathic, being human or humane, before jumping into any sort of path. So we may equip ourselves with a critical thought that helps us to discern the rights and wrongs within a given path. Another common misconception is thinking about right-hand paths as good and left-hand paths as evil. The truth is that such paths, even within themselves, are quite distinct and differ in both their methods and their aims. But the most fundamental difference, it seems to me, is that right-hand paths are more restrictive 
as certain things that in all the world are pretty normal are often forbidden or frowned upon. And as such, there, there are quite strong limitations on how to be human and how to live and experience life as a human being. But right-hand paths are also quite collective. You are inserted within a group, a congregation, um, and individual experience is often not allowed in such paths and human creativeness and imaginative power has no place in right-hand paths. Therefore, constructing a limited view on life and the mysteries of life from the lens of a collective agreed-upon reality that fits into the path itself but not on individual experience. I understand that this sort of approach takes away some responsibility from the individual by instead allowing the individual to take part on a formal dogma and follow a specific set of rules and code of ethics and a behavioral pattern by having the individual participate in an organized group, which is good, <laughs> as it takes away individual responsibility and the individual thinking. It's useful. It is quite comfortable. The work is done for the individual, <clears throat> sorry, but it is dangerous as individual identity is taken away. Individual experience is not allowed because the individual has to accept the belief systems of such a right-hand path and trust, put one's faith on a higher authority. The left-hand path, however, in many aspects is quite the opposite as it is quite non-structured in its methods, if you take my meaning. Uh, there are no prohibitions, nothing is restricted and nothing is forbidden because it already takes um, a previous sense of morals, a code of ethics and a genuine sense of interiorizing what is good and what is evil, so people can do whatever they want, provided that they are aware of the consequences of their actions. It's not for children. <laughs> it's for people who have uh, previously established rational thought and common sense. In a left-hand path, there's no authority to dictate what you should or shouldn't do and how you should behave and indeed how you should experience something. There's nothing of that. People are free to explore the mysteries and the occultic mystical powers as they will, having in mind the real consequences of one's choices and actions. In other words, in a left-hand path, the individual takes full and sole responsibility for their actions and their own struggles in the path towards whatever one aims to achieve. This, of course, uh, makes things rather difficult and dangerous because we are counting solely on ourselves. But mind you that I'm not stating that a left-hand path is better than a right-hand one. I'm sure we can all agree that we can find both useful, beneficial things and harmful and unacceptable things in all paths. And even though the human behavioral patterns are often more inclined to cling on to dualisms because it's rather easy and comfortable to have a dualistic perspective and makes things quite simple, life itself, reality and the things we deal with concerning the mysteries of life are never quite dualistic in nature. What I'm stating here isn't that we need to follow a specific left-hand path in order to do witchcraft. Not at all. In fact, witchcraft doesn't specifically have the need to follow any particular path and doesn't necessarily require religion. Traditional folk magic may include a lot of religious and cultural aspects, but, but it does not require to be religious, as traditional folk magic, witchcraft, is quite the syncretism of belief systems and in great part it is constructed from experimental engagement. What I'm really stating here is that it is useful, perhaps, to adopt the general approach of the left-hand path in the sense of self-improvement through the freedom of expressing ourselves in our own imaginative and creative ways. As I said, witchcraft can be quite solitary and in many moments in life it requires a solitary work 
as such, it seems to me. It is useful to adopt a state of mind that helps us to in, in improving our solitary work and indeed it gives us a mental structure that makes us more apt to work alone and focus on uh, our progression as lonely witches. The individu individualistic mode of a left-hand path isn't necessarily an excuse to be antisocial, but rather a focus on self-improvement by exploring ourselves and the things that best work for us, ditching agreed upon and stipulated methods of the collective, because what works for some people doesn't often work for us, and if we try to follow a method that works for someone and it may not work for us, it can be quite frustrating and we have the tendency to quit. We do need to find uh, what works best for us and in order to do that we must explore our own selves and we must express ourselves in the way we know how and let loose our creativity and imagination so we can better engage with the powers and persons that are fundamental in our craft. Just as a person in a left-hand path is undertaking a quest of sorts and as such is seeking something that is more dynamic and more in line with one's own consciousness in the manner in which we are individually built, the same thing will happen in solitary work within witchcraft. An ever-ending self-evolutionary process. As I said, uh, it's not an excuse to be antisocial. Uh, because real help can be given to real people once a person has achieved a certain level of knowledge that can be applied for the benefit of the community. Self-knowledge is important and we rarely find that in paths that promote the self-knowledge of the individual that is seen as the authority of the group and the group simply follows preconceived ideas. Individual knowledge matters, and it is important to share it with others, to share such knowledge with one another. As this also improves our own craft by listening to others' experiences. In a way, I would say that left-hand paths are, can be quite ruthless in their approach because we are learning from experience, and experience is achieved through mistakes and failures and some of which are quite dangerous. No one has our back and no one is there to give proper instructions. And the same thing happens in witchcraft. If, 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 if people state that witchcraft is all good and beautiful, peaceful, gentle and calm, I don't think people are truly dealing with witchcraft at all. Whatever pleasant meadow of white flowers in a sunny day in the mountainous landscape of the hopes people are into, it's anything but witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft can be quite ruthless as well, precisely because we are gathering experience from failures and successes and, and the real engagement with forces, entities other than human persons can be quite dangerous at times and it's a question of survival. And survival, more often than not, is to seek ways to minimize the danger, harm and even death that is present within the cycles we live in and engage with. It's not a joke and it's not a playground for children. So, in order to survive witchcraft, one, one of the useful approaches we could take is indeed to adopt a mode of thinking that is more apt to solitary work, concerned with the improvement of the individual within a space in which the individual is completely alone and on their own. Most of the time, when we take our first steps into witchcraft, we really don't know where to start and what should be done and how to do it. This leads us to seek out those who have a lot more experience, but such persons' experiences are often the product of their own failures and successes according to their own beings and the way they are built, which may not specifically work for us as individual beings apart from everybody else. And 
following someone's steps often results in more failures than successes because we are not doing the type of work that we require for self-improvement under our own conditions and we are not experiencing meaningful outcomes through experimental engagement fit for the way we are built and our own existence. If we simply copy what someone else is doing and we adopt what someone else thinks without questioning the whys and hows and the real purposes and meanings, we are not doing anything for ourselves. We are just a byproduct. When things get difficult and dangerous, because they will, within witchcraft, we cannot expect someone or someone else to clean it all after us. We cannot wait on someone else to give us comfort and we simply run away from our responsibilities. Witchcraft requires hard work. It is difficult. <laughs> it is challenging. So it is far more beneficial to have a mind structure that promotes individual thought and individual experience as well as individual freedom. In solitary work within witchcraft, we only have ourselves to count on, to rely on, and we must be the safe haven for ourselves alone. And that is achieved through self-confidence, self-reliance, self-esteem, and being aware of our own power, our own strength, our own capacity to solve problems and having the cunningness to disentangle all the threads of problems, challenges and and obstacles that we face. Having the boldness, firmness and courage to do what must be done when things go sideways and fall apart. You don't need to follow a left-hand path or any path at all, of course not. I just think it is useful to adopt a basic approach of it, of left hand path, which promotes self-achievement and self-excellence and it often destroys one's self-pride and self-admiration because when we are face to face with real problems, with trials and defiance and we do not yet have the power and strength and knowledge to deal with them, we really are forcibly humbled and that's a useful moment of learning pushing us to seek out ways to improve and to finally overcome every trial. In my opinion, <laughs> we should indeed adopt a mindset in witchcraft that helps us to fulfill individual potential. I am not saying that it should be the only mindset to be adopted, but instead to certainly also be included so that the solitary work can be more bearable. <laughs> You are the director of your own destiny. Witchcraft isn't meant to be a copy of anything. In my opinion, <laughs> witchcraft is meant to be experienced. It is meant to be lived and fully make it part of our own beings. Witchcraft is like love. I'm always giving that example. Uh, we, we cannot love the way others love someone else. We love according to our own minds and hearts and the fervent passion that only has a true meaning to us. Often irrational and it is meant to be irrational because love needs no explanation at all because it is meant to be felt, lived, experienced and embrace all the pleasures and hardships that come with it and, and with courage face the challenges, the sacrifices and the consequences of every choice and action. Love is not something to play with. Love is transcendent and it is a transformative force that changes us forever. And so is witchcraft. It is transformative magic that will always destroy us and remake us at every turn of the cycle. In witchcraft we can and should indeed listen to other people's advice and experiences, but ultimately we learn from our own experiences and from our own self-effort because witchcraft has to be an experimental engagement. Every human being at every moment in history and uh, at every cycle of life only is what it is because the human being evolves through experience, both surely imitating behavior 
but also understanding behavior and reshape it to one's reality and even invent new methods that better fit into each circumstance and need. Witchcraft in itself is survival, and so through an experimental engagement we find ways to not only survive but also to improve living. While in a right-hand path people rely on someone else or something beyond themselves, in a left-hand path a person relies only on themselves, their cunning, their skill, their own character and their own desires, their intellect, and the experience gained through one's own efforts. That's the same thing in witchcraft. We learn from our own experiences and mistakes. Which, witchcraft requires a, a free spirit already possessed of a certain willful character. Witchcraft is not meant to be comfortable, it is meant to be liberating. My dear friends, I do hope this video was useful in some way, in any way. I wish to see a world where people are more self-confident and more empowered, far more inclined and to have the freedom to express themselves, especially when it comes to express what best define us as a species, which is our ability to be imaginative and creative beings. Life may be hard, existence may be hard, and it, it is, but certainly there's a lot of things that we can do to make it less hard, thus improve the experience of living. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, thank you for today. Until we meet again, my dear friends. <laughs>